Nandam. Hello everyone, my name is Ma Nitya Mahajayananda and today I'm going to be taking you a tour on the future largest golden temple in Nityananda Pita. So right now, uh, as you can see, this is the entranceway of, you know, of the, uh, the largest um, golden temple. And so what I'm going to do is give you a tour of the ground and how it's going to look like in the future. So come on. As you can see, if you're walking this way, this is where the Manasarovar is. The Manasarovar is a, a, a vast a water body that is right next to the Vaidya Sarovar. Now, the Vaidya Sarovar is where everyone, you know, can take a dip and have blessed water onto their body so that they can heal. And it's also the place that we do Rudra Abhishekam, which is one of the most powerful pujas that you can ever do. And a puja is a, a, a fire ritual. Okay? Mm. So this is right here. This is the dorm. Um, this red building with the uh, white top. And here are more rooms for people when they come into the Pita. This is the Rajasabha right here. And then, as you can see, right behind it is going to be the Golden Temple. Actually, um, the Golden Temple is going to be a little more farther away from the main grounds. Mm. And you're going to be walking towards the Banyan Tree. So you'll have to take a little bit of a walk from the, you know, Rajasabha and from the dorms to go into the temple. But this is how the temple is going to be looking like. Now, Swamiji had said that when you go into the main temple, the golden temple right there, mm. you'll be going around like a linga. Now, if when you go around that linga, your eye will instantly open. So even if Swamiji, your third eye, not your eye, your third eye will instantly open. So even when Swamiji is not going to be here uh, on earth, people can still visit this temple and have their third eye initiation. And you know, Swamiji is going to be here for a long time though. He's going to be here for 127 years. Mm. He's only 40. So he's going to be here for a long, long, long period of time. So as you can see, like, you know, this is like the entrance of the, uh, the uh, temple. And right over there is like the flagpole. Then, as you go on, it's like it's the this structure is purely agamic. So mm. all the temples like this is from the agamas. It's a science because the structure where the flagpole is exactly where the temple is, even the goal surrounding it, it's all so that it can imbibe cosmic energy. So what this temple is going to be doing is going to be imbibing cosmic energy so that anyone who goes into it instantly gets into a higher frequency. So as, as you can come along, see, like, look at all the, the small, small details. This is exactly how it's going to be. And as you can see, like, you know, like, if those are the buildings and this is the temple, it's going to be a massive structure. And one thing about this temple that is so amazing is that it's right by the banyan tree. Now this banyan tree is a kalpa vriksha, meaning this is the same tree that came out from the churning of the milky ocean. Thousands and thousands, actually I have no idea, millennia ago. So this is the same banyan tree. And a kalpa vriksha, what that means is a wish fulfilling tree. Now you can go to the banyan tree and you can ask for whatever wish you want, whatever intention you have, and it will come true no matter what. And not only that, but every Thursday, if you go around that tree 108 times holding that intention, that means it will come true. So, uh, uh, come on. And one thing really, 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 really cool about this um, banyan tree is that it's the same banyan tree that Lord Rama came to and uh, did puja for the Swayambhu Linga. So the Swayambhu Linga is a Linga uh, that formed naturally inside that banyan tree. It actually, when you come, you'll see when you go into the banyan tree, there's a little cave right at the front. And actually that Linga uh, formed naturally. And if you don't know what a Linga is, Linga literally means symbol in Sanskrit and what it represents is the formlessness form of God in form. So, 
Uh, let's go to the seat. Like that, that's the banyan tree over there. And it's such a holy uh, place. And actually, um, not only that, but close by here uh, in Mysore, right? Um, actually, um, uh, you know, uh, Sri Durga. So basically, Mother Durga defeated the demons very close to here um, in Mysore Road. It's like, so this land is very, very, very auspicious, especially this banyan tree, because this is the same tree that Lord Dakshina Murti, um, you know, taught the disciples uh, his, you know, the the Sapta Rishis. He's taught the Sapta Rishis, uh, you know, the knowledge. And actually, when Ram came, he heard about this tree from the Rishis that were staying close by. So this is like very, very holy. So actually, this uh, temple is gonna be crazy. Um, flowing with energy it's gonna be so energetic it's it's absolutely insane because not only is this temple getting energized but it's in the land where Rama came um, you know Durga uh, defeated the demons close by and it's, it's just such a holy land that you know it's going to be so amazing and you know just like Swamiji has said just by going around the Linga before you go to the main deity your third eye will be initiated and awakened so uh, this is the end of the tour uh, and I hope you enjoy it and you know in the future uh, you don't only have to see like you know um, like you know this version of it this paper version of it what you'll really see is the the permanent stone version so thank you so much and you know if you have any questions any comments write them below and we'll answer them uh, you know we'll definitely answer them so thank you so much and if you think what you know uh, we have to say is interesting you definitely have to check out Swamiji's channel actually there's gonna be a link right above me uh, to Swamiji's YouTube channel so yeah definitely check it out thank you so much Nityanandam but wait there's more now <laughs> because we're having Mahasadashi Voham and a couple thousand awesome people from all over the world are now here experiencing this tell me people are gonna ask Sanatana why does this girl have those dots on the side of her temples? Oh. What does that mean? Can you yeah. give me an explanation? Okay, <laughs> so no problem. So what these dots on my uh, forehead is, it's called Oshada. So Oshada is when you mix cosmic energy with herbs. So what you really do is you infuse cosmic energy and powerful thought currents into something physical so that when you take it in, you also start reverberating with those powerful cognitions and that powerful cosmic energy. For example, I have seen a lot of people, well not a lot of people, uh, let me give you one example for this specific person. This specific person, we were just talking and he you know he was uh, he seemed very knowledgeable he was asking questions and you know we had a good conversation but then he said a comment that really you know took me back a step and what he said was like oh you know uh, uh, you know I'm just asking these questions and I know that I'm not a very important person so like you know thank you for letting me know and when he said that comment it was like what are you saying like why would you say something like that actually what he's doing is like he's um, making himself littler so he's belittling himself and when I told him that I was like hey why are you saying that you know uh, that you're not important you know when you're doing that to yourself be very clear that other people will do that to you and then you'll get mad at them for something that you do to yourself so when I told him that he had that click, he had that cognition, wow, the words that I say matter, the things that I think about myself matter, and he completely changed his cognition. And what Swamiji does with this Oshara is have these powerful thought currents about yourself put into herbs, very natural organic herbs like bilva leaves, durva grass, neem oil, neem leaves, everything very organic. He puts them in and you either ingest them, you either put them on your skin or he burns them and you just inhale the, the, the fumes so that it goes into your body and cleanses you out. So those are the three ways that you put on Oshara. You eat it, you put it on your body, and 
uh, on very uh, few ones, you inhale the fumes. Because actually what the process is, is like you have to burn these to make it a paste or make it a powder. So those are like, you know, the three ways that you put on these oshagas. And when you do, you your body gets so healed that you will be a pure mirror to reflect pure consciousness and when you are that pure mirror to reflect that consciousness you express shaktis like crazy shaktis like um, making yourself taller shaktis like moving things with your consciousness not telekinesis moving things with your very con consciousness telekinesis is a very small word which means moving things with your mind your mind is nothing yeah. like your consciousness is when you could move mountains with your consciousness you, you could move other planets with your consciousness and Swamiji said that his disciples um, just by the flick of their hand they can move planets so it's very very exciting times I you know living with an avatar is absolutely amazing so please come through if you want to do these if you want to express these shaktis definitely come get initiated by Swamiji and if you don't want to move mountains or planets that's okay move people move your situation in life uh, move jobs you know get better jobs get better um, or not even be your own boss you know so these shaktis are powerful because um, they let you create the life that you want and if you can move a bottle across a flat surface you can definitely move someone's mind you can move businesses you can move anybody and anything so it's very 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 applicable to your life and lifestyle thank you mm. as always thank you Mahajaya no problem Nityananda <laughs> she's amazing <laughs> Well guys, you've been asking for it. You've seen the videos of the ashram, of the adenum, and so this is what the future looks like. There's a lot in store. There's a lot of groundwork being done now, so yeah, it's a great time to be alive, and it's a great time to be here. So yeah, I'll give you one last look and kind of walk around a little bit. Now don't let the size of this model fool you. This is an enormous piece of land. This banyan tree is gigantic. You see me sun gazing by that tree. <laughs> that tree is massive. So you can only imagine just how gigantic this temple is going to be. The groundwork is already being laid. The future has been set. Reality is happening as we speak. But yeah, if you guys have any more questions, you know what to do. Till next time, like I always say, Stay in the light and Nithyananda.